Welcome everyone to Property Inside Straight Talk. Tonight, we are very honored to have uh, two special guests, uh, two VIP guests to share with us some of the insights for property investment. Of course, firstly, our surveyor, Vicky Howe, the founder for Propedia Consultancy. Welcome, Vicky. Hi. And uh, of course, the second uh, guest will be uh, Alan Poon, the author for three books and also the founder of Superior Health, uh, Wealth. Sorry. Uh, Alan, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for inviting me. All right. Uh, first off, I just want to get some of the insights or some of the perspective from you all. We just... I, I just read this article from, uh, from a news agency saying that IMF uh, is expecting a global recession for, for everyone, for every country. And how will this economic landscape change after, after this? Well, I think it's a, definitely an observation that everyone at home is watching right like now, um, in fact, uh, I think recession, it really depends on each different country. From Malaysia perspective, I think we are definitely hitting rock bottom. I wouldn't say uh, recession is now, but I would say in the next few months, uh, depending on how the government policies are, uh, like recently the new packages that was announced, how well it can actually sustain the, uh, the economy landscape. Uh, yeah. I definitely, we are heading downwards the valley la, in, in that context. La. And uh, I think the, the voices is definitely louder on the SME side. As we know that the pre artin packages by the government, uh, it's to basically uh, address the rice bowl issue of most of the uh, majority, uh, the masses first. Yeah. So looking at it, I think we will still have a buffer of maybe the next two months to see how SMEs, companies uh, uh, react to the situation. Of course, uh, certain sectors already have been badly hit since uh, the start of the year, uh, thanks to this uh, 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 COVID-19, uh, like the aviation, tourism industry. So you see a lot of hotels are now turning into quarantine centers, mm -hmm. um, you know, just to substantiate some of their incomes. You know, um, uh, Other than that, a lot of our sub-sectors in sector real estate are definitely affected, like retails, shopping malls and whatnot. Thanks, uh, Alan. Vicky, what, what is your thought on this? How will our economic landscape change? And uh, for this time around, how will it be different than the rest of the recessions? I take it positively because uh, about this recession things is not a uh, today matter already. It's quite a few years that we have been in uh, on the low side of the economy already. So I would say that all this while we are actually moving towards the uh, economy L curve. So each economy, they has got a timeline whereby when is the maturity of the recession and then it will rebound back. So at this point in time, we know that the good news is that we know that we're at the rock bottom bottom mm -hmm. and whereby the next things that's going to happen is to rebound back. Now this rebounds back, when is this period is going to happen is all depending on after this MCO and after all this entire COVID virus thing, how our company country react to it and how this SME uh, produce and uh, uh, sustain all this economy back. So of course, uh, looking at this, it is actually a positive side whereby most of the time when it's recession, we do not know when is the rock bottom bottom. And now we know that at this point in time is the worst of the worst case scenario already. So the next thing we know that it will come up uh, and this will happen in like six months to 12 months period. And this is six months to 12 months period is really crucial in the sense that how all this SME uh, bosses uh, take charge and lead the companies and also how our country leaders lead the country and the economy as well. Yeah. And of course, uh, looking at current scenario we can see that there are a lot of factors being affected a sector being affected uh, but not entirely i look at some of the sectors like you know uh, internet businesses they are doing pretty well uh, some of the pharmaceutical uh, companies and uh, medical companies they are doing extremely well as well groceries all these companies are doing very well so it's just a handful of uh, other sector because of mco they can't 
continues to work and can't continues to generate income. These yeah. are the sectors that have been affected. But other than that, I see it has a, a temporary uh, pause to the economy. Maybe I will bring back the focus to property market. Uh, of course, from this uh, economic repercussion, they will have a domino effect on our property market as well. So uh, maybe uh, you guys can help me to share how will it impact our property market and uh, what will be the best way for us to mitigate the impact. Okay, um, I think again, uh, we have to look at the micro perspective to the micro perspective. Uh, definitely today, we are not just looking at an economic crisis. We are looking at also uh, the health crisis. And of course, earlier we had this political change of uh, landscape in the country where now a lot of policies, uh, in fact, all the stimulus package was, uh, are to be tabled in the first uh, parliament sitting. So how would all these things impact the property sector? Uh, it all, I think it's all subject to whether we are looking at the angle of uh, the buyer sentiment or the so-called tenant, or as well as even uh, stakeholders like uh, professionals, like uh, Vicky is a, a valuer and also all these uh, auctioneers or even real estate agents. Yes. Uh, I agree with uh, Ricky to say that uh, certain subsectors are behaving much better in terms of property. Um, example, uh, prior to this MCO locking down, uh, as I was doing advisory work for some clients, uh, we also mm -hmm. saw that actually the uh, retail sector is pretty much uh, quite, quite low already, it's a bit dead. But of course, I think moving forward, uh, there will be still uh, this demand in terms of uh, space utilization for uh, retail grocery. Mm -hmm. I think uh, grocery is an essential service. But if you talk about malls, uh, non essential, I think. Uh, a lot of malls or uh, REITs in terms of REITs, uh, they will have to look into how to basically utilize the space better. Yes. Uh, look, moving forward, perhaps uh, some hotels which are affected, hopefully are not closing down. Some of the space can be turned into uh, what the last few years we have been talking about in the real estate where co-living, people can mm -hmm. talk about communal living, uh, you know, uh, things like that. So there are opportunities. Uh, not, not everything is bad. But of course, before all these things come up, there will be certain percentage of the market that will go into distress mode, yeah. uh, so to speak. And uh, looking at the current uh, announcement where there is a moratorium of six months uh, deferment for the uh, principal for most of the loans, personal loan and housing loan and car loan, yeah. uh, property-wise, I think there won't be much of a distress property yet. But however, six months later, there could be a surge if... Uh, individuals or even corporate entities are, are not able to sustain their, what they call this cash flow. Okay. So we may have like a muted six months, lah. you know, everybody uh, at home, uh, employers, of course, they can't sleep. But first, uh, space utilization in terms of property, uh, I think wellness definitely, uh, as I wrote in some of the articles uh, recently, uh, wellness real estate definitely will be something to watch out in the future. Mm -hmm. um, as well as also perhaps, uh, uh, what we call these uh, medical related uh, properties. Lah. Okay, I think that will be a revolution in pay space utilization. Uh, what happened is that for many years, we our retail space, like what Alan said, it has been a, 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 a very low supply, uh, a low demand in retail space. Mm -hmm. Actually, out of all the properties that are being affected, I think this round, retail will be badly affected due to uh, our consumer behavior right now. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that dot-coms uh, era has come out in 1990s. And during this 1990s, everyone's habit of uh, changing to online shopping has started. And in countries much more advanced like Taiwan, UK or US, they already start using online uh, shopping rather than you know physically going there. But on the other hand, on Malaysia part, Malaysia has got a very, uh, they, they want to touch the item, they want to feel the item, they want to have the habit of going out. And also shopping mall has become a family gathering space. Mm -hmm. And also a recreational uh, place for all the family to gather. Mm -hmm. So shopping mall has been in use for uh, the past few years, but the uh, demand for shopping mall has reduced tremendously over the period of time. But this round, it was changed the habit of Malaysian shopping because for this one whole month of MCO, you will be learn how to shop online. You will 
kick off your bad habit of wanting to touch the item, wanting to see the item before you buy because you really need the items to ship it over to you. So when this one month, everyone is used to shop online. In other words, shopping mall will be, uh, their business will be jeopardized by all these uh, habits, shopping habits. I will say that in the future, a lot of shopping mall uh, that are not very, very uh, doing, not doing very well. It is actually a time that they will go into trouble uh, of renting out their spaces. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, I also be seeing that a lot of warehouses will be needed rather than shopping mall. So because these people they will still need to shop online, they still there are still demand in terms of uh, uh shopping and all that, but they will shop online. So where is this uh places of storing the products? Yes. So they will need warehouses. I will say that a lot of warehouses will be highly in demand. Shops may be uh, first floor or second floor or even third, fourth floor will turn into uh, warehouses. All the, those uh, offices that cannot rent out can be converted into warehouses as well. I so see. I see that as a trend of changing the uh, way people use the space right now. Uh, Vicky, what is the effect do you think uh, for this uh, six months moratorium? For this six months moratorium, uh, this six months moratorium is actually very good because after this MCO, we need uh, some time to recover from our businesses. Uh, for one month, you don't work from nine to six. You know, you want to suddenly increase the productivity in the company or the momentum is really hard to do so. So you need about three months to six months to gain back the trust from your customer and gain back your momentum. So it is very good that these things uh, last for six months. But having said that, some of this property that is already going up for auction before this MCO still will proceed as usual. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when this MCO starts, because there are so many auctions that is supposed to be auctioned in the auction room right now, they have been put on hold for one whole month. So in other words, right after this MCO, there will be plenty of uh, units will be up for auction, not because of this, uh, during this MCO, they have no business or they're having trouble with their cash flow. It's because that all these uh, postponed cases will be brought forward after the MCO period. Okay, mm -hmm. so we will see a sudden surge in uh, uh, auction cases. Yeah. And right after that, we will see a substantial amount lesser uh, auction cases because be uh, those people who are having cash trouble already, yeah. the government gives them additional six months of uh, moratorium uh, deferment payment. So they got plenty of time to generate cash. I think this is a good time for them, uh, a second opportunity for them to get gain back their property. And uh, talking about distress mode, just now Alan was mentioning, what do you think of auction right now, uh, Alan? Uh, auction to me, uh, ever since like six years ago when I do my first workshop in the market, I always believe uh, and I always put a positive connotation in the market, especially to the media, uh, with friends like you, Dr. KK, who actually mm -hmm. say, uh, you know, to, to remove the so-called buyers beware. Uh, too many buyers people sometimes put a lot of fear into people's, uh, uh, especially investors who do not know much about auction. Uh, auction to me is like a very natural progression of uh, things. There will be always people who make money during bad times or good times. There will be people who are distressed whether it's good time or bad time. It's yes. only maybe uh, it is louder uh, when it comes to bad times like a crisis like what we are having, not just Malaysia, all over the world, where yes. people are facing some credit crunch. So in fact, uh, I always mention that uh, auction is not an uh, uh, immediate result. Uh, there are many ways. In fact, because at the end of the day, if you are not an investor, you are staying in your own house. The last thing you want to let go is your own uh, roof. Like, you, know, you need a roof above your head to stay. So mm -hmm. most people will try to basically save uh, uh, the, the house as the last asset to liquidate. Unless, of course, they really have to, you know, uh, after finance it and whatever not, and they cannot still uh, use the money to survive their day-to-day -day business or whatever cash flow, then perhaps uh, the, the house will go for auction. But of course, there's another story altogether because the process yeah. will take some time. Yes. Uh, all in all, if you ask me generally, I would say auction properties is something that uh, an investor or property investor should have uh, some of the so-called uh, asset class like, It's part of their, 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 their gameplay. Their portfolio. You know? yeah, okay. Yes.
All right, Vicky, uh, what's your take on, uh, on auction? And of course, the other thing is, what, what would be the main advantage of uh, auction property among all the asset class? Uh, auction, like what Alan Poon said, you know, at any point in time in the economy, you will still find auction property no matter what. It is not uh, the economy that costs people's property into auction, but it's actually the financial management of that person who owns the property. So rather than, you know, people who blame it on the uh, economic crisis you know is actually their financial management um, beside that talking about auction property right now you will see that uh, there will be uh, those that upcoming cases it will be uh, lesser but auction is always good for you to make money in terms of uh, if you know how to take the skills of um, uh, doing auction property and of course auction is it's a place whereby those people who want to get good deal, but they are very fear of uh, going inside the auction for the reason that what if I buy overpriced property? Um, I think auction all these years has been overly rated by those typical unit that they know. So for example, uh, this is a very well-known project. If there's one or two units coming up for auction, you will be seeing that 50, 60 people rush to this typical unit. Yeah. And end up, these people were not able to buy it below market value. Mm -hmm. Whereas there are so many other properties, there are good properties that are up for auction that no one actually discovered. Mm -hmm. These are the properties that you can actually uh, get way, way below the market value. Which means in terms of the area or expectation needs to be set differently. Lah, because I just share my experience. I've been to three auctions before. Uh, all the three doesn't give me very good uh, result. In fact, very poor result. Lah, like what you just shared, Vicky. One of it is, uh, is, is a shop lot in the, I still remember, in Madame Pasa. So the moment we went in, there are easily 60 bidders inside the crime inside a very small, uh, I still remember the one in Shah Alam, uh, this uh, magistrate, is it called magistrate? The, the, ocean, the ocean hall? Magistrate. The makama. Yeah. yeah. Just a very small room, 60 over bidders. So uh, now the next question I ask is how can we actually find opportunity in auction? Like, like what just you mentioned uh, earlier on, Vicky, we have, to you, we have to focus on areas that are not considered hot properties or hot, hot areas, spot. hot yeah. spots. Yes. Uh, besides that, any other insights that you all can share with us? Uh, yeah, I think, first of all, people have to get the hot spot out of their mind because mm. many people thought that the hot spot is Bangsa, la, you know, Klang Lama, la, Bukit Jale, la, all these kind of things. Yes, this is hot spot. But because it's so hot that everybody went and jerk up the price and even if you go there inside the auction room and you will most probably get beyond uh, above market value property. So those are the kind of properties that I avoid. I don't just look into the location, the hotspot, where else I look into the pricing whereby uh, it is really below market value. So how low where I go into is uh, somewhere around below 40% or 30% market value, then only I proceed with my auction. Otherwise, you go inside, uh, you just you don't even get a chance to put up your hand the next part. Yeah, party. wasting time. Yeah, wasting time. Yeah. And wasting your cost of buying your bank draft. Yes, yes, yes. So perhaps I can add on to uh, what uh, KK has just said, lah. You know, uh -huh. uh, they, they, I think I believe there are two pronged strategy to how to get all these uh, good deals, lah. Uh, number one is to the category of people who already know the the game, the game plan in terms of uh, auction. They they are or they are they are not first time. So perhaps uh we can we, we can't remove the dogma of a hotspot because at the end of the day everybody is basing on location until and unless the uh, market is educated in a such a way that. But buying property is not about location. I think then uh, people won't just rush to any hotspot. And I agree with it because I, I usually don't go to hotspot unless I uh, talk about it so much and I, I get my, me and my investor friend buy it until you know, we become a hotspot. <laughs> but uh, ultimately, uh, to find something good, I think at the end of the day, we need to talk about the first group of people. Uh, you need to get yourself educated first. And I think uh, Wiki will agree with me that education is uh, key and crucial and pertinent to to finding uh, auction property, just like any other properties out there. You, know, you need to know your numbers right. 
mm-hmm. you need to know in fact the property type uh, or that you are keen and in fact uh, the area that you want to but most importantly is the objective why you want to get a uh, property it's not just because it's 30 40 percent below market although that's uh, definitely a, a plus point but at the end of the day is why do you want to go into auction property because uh, any type of asset class uh, whether it's primary market secondary market or even auction there is a pro and cons to it, I would say. So the next question is, when is the best time for us to go into auction property? Anytime. Anytime is the best time. Actually, even if uh, the market is good, you will still face a lot of people inside the auction room. Even the market is bad, it's even worse because you think that the market do not have money, but they are actually still have a lot of people who keep their bullet all this while waiting for this moment to come. So at any time, if you want to wait until the market is the, uh, the best time to buy, you already left, you will be left behind way already, way left behind because the reason why is that uh, you will never know when is the lowest low. So if you, buy, if you buy it right now, at least you know that like what I said earlier, we are in the worst scenario already, the rock bottom bottom already. So if you buy it right now, at least you know that even if it goes a bit lower, you will not lose out your money. Best time always is, uh, the answer is always yesterday, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but too bad, too, too bad we can't rewind. Uh-huh. So uh, I think always it's still the objective and the location or the type of property that you wanted. Because if you're familiar, example, I'm familiar with Oak Clang Road. Uh, if I am so into it, I would know that, you know, how is the price changes over the years? What are the offer rings uh, from developers project or even sub sale that is there? And the best time to buy auction property is in fact, before it goes to auction. Uh, in, uh, for the why uh, if you can negotiate something below market, uh, beyond auction price, it's even better. So I always compare auction properties with sub sale uh, market in a nearby area that I, I targeted. So mm-hmm. that would make sense. At least uh, you have a comparison to go in rather than just go in based on euphoria, hype, especially if you're dealing with, uh, example, agent auctioneer who tell you that this is a good deal. So it's still back to uh, what you need and uh, how much you need it. Right? You, know, you also don't want to over leverage because if you over leverage, right, like some of the people who over leverage in the last few years, I think now they will be in this situation whereby maybe they have to let go some of these properties because mm-hmm. auction can be voluntary as well. Uh, open market auction, it doesn't have to be distressed uh, or foreclosure by the banks. Private yeah, I want to fall into that category as well. Yeah, private auction. Uh. Yeah. So what, what kind of mistakes can we avoid if we were to uh, go into uh, auction property? Mistakes, uh, I guess, uh, generally speaking, a lot of people are looking at the price point, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and uh, they feel that uh, this is something good. So they do, they do a lot of work prior to the auction. And like you said, when they go to the auction room, then they got a shock of their life. No, sometimes he go also, ma. Wow, yeah. this man, my next guy, uh, keep raising up his hand. Uh, can right. I have to outbeat him? Then you look at your own, uh, hey, how, how much bullet do I have compared to others, you see? So I think one of the biggest mistakes is that a lot of people are uh, looking into themselves rather than looking to the market. So I always tell people that if you haven't been to an auction, you have to go and have a look and have a feel at it first. All right, at least you know uh, what is there. And also, the avenue for auction, the type of auction that is available. You don't have to just go for the public auction that is held uh, usually on weekdays or some of them on weekends. Perhaps you can go to high court auction as well, which is usually held in the uh, working hours. All right. And of course, uh, now we have the e-bidding. Um, so all these are some, uh, some of the things that people should look at. And of course, don't, don't overbid. Like, the biggest mistake is that people overbid. All right. Uh, on paper, yes, uh, it doesn't look good uh, provided you have get the financing. Uh, if you cannot get the Financing because you overbid, and then that basically that's gone case. Uh, but then again, if some people overbid, I also say that uh, you know take it as a lesson because I think in investment there's always some lessons to be paid. You either pay to the market by losing money out there, or you pay to some seminars or whatever, which is you call it investment into knowledge. So either way, I think you still have to make sure that you learn up the lessons well. Like, and I, I'm I'm happy that the six month monitorium is there. For people who may look want to look into auction property to really read some books, go into some seminars. Uh, uh, I, I'm doing a few webinars so mm-hmm. that you can actually learn up these six months. And when, like what Vicky say, like you know, the bottleneck is that now some of the cases that is being hold up. So maybe it's time also to 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 do some uh, market survey now. And by the next six months time later on, perhaps there will be some search of uh, cases uh, soon. So that is also another uh, time factor for you to 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 go in. I think first of all, uh, it's emotion. When uh, people go inside the auction room, they just forgotten about what is their price, maximum price they should get. 
because of sometimes is the, the the emotion that we want to win the properties that actually gets us going on putting our head hand up. So I have come across there was once uh, the property only started reserve price started from uh, six million, and it bid up to twenty seven million. Okay, wow. in between that was my hand up, but after that I let go of my hand up. <laughs> Wow. 27 million is uh, way above market value already. But they, they actually very happy because they've won the property. So that was one mistake that people always do. The second is people don't do due diligence before they buy the property. And they make an assumption that I know this property well, I know this area so well, mm -hmm. uh, I don't need to do any of the research. So the first number one research that they don't do is the title search. Even they do the title search, they still don't understand what is stipulated inside the title. How to lift up the caveat, all this kind of thing they have no idea of. Especially all these newbies who buy auction property, they end up buying all this kind of property. And of course, uh, because auction property is not like a sub sale whereby you can actually go inside and view the property. Auction property is come where as is basis. So you whatever you bought, you bought with it. If there's a day body, you bought the property with a day body as well. <laughs> if there's free fridge, you bought it with the free fridge as well. Okay. Uh, so a lot of people did not go and see the structure, you know, even do some research on the construction before they buy the property. So it's actually quite dangerous for doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, not everybody has got construction background. Yeah. So you, you need to do uh, due diligence on this property before you buy it. I have a friend who bought the property and then turns out that when she went inside and look at the property with me, the whole roof collapsed down yeah. right in front of her. Yeah. Oh, right in front. Luckily, she's safe. With her mic. Oh, okay. <laughs> Many stories to hear like, in auction, you know. Uh -huh. Yes. Besides that, maybe I want to touch a little bit on the, this MCO. Okay, we all know that MCO should, the last day of MCO should be on the 14th of April. So, give you all two scenarios. Uh, let's say MCO will be lifted on the 14th of April, what will happen to our economy, okay? If MCO were to be extended, say maybe another three to four weeks, what will it happen to our, our economy as well as our property market? I think the second, uh, the lat later one will, will happen most likely. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like our MCO might extend. The reason being is because every single day we still have three G digit of infected. Yes. Yeah, three digit. So until the day that we have double digit or lesser or single digit. Or single digit. That's yeah. when our government will let us roam around again. Yeah. Uh so if let's say for example, if our uh really on the 14th we on the 15th we can actually leave our house. I think this uh it actually would not have that much of difference. It only depends on during these two weeks. After that, if extent, what is the motivation people have, you know? Either you are lost or either you do not have uh, uh, inspiration to go on or you already think that it's already doomed already. You know, there are a lot of people start putting negative uh, posting on Facebook on how they lose money and, you know, this is really unhealthy. If a lot of people are infected with this kind of depression, that means after this, Whatever MCO is the uh, whatever date that MCO lifted, doesn't uh, matter. Lah. It doesn't matter. But what is the mindset that people have after they, they leave the house? I think to answer this question is like you know looking into the crystal ball, I know. Uh, but uh, to make it more, I think objective is at the end of day, uh, what investors should do is to expect the worst to come. And uh, looking at global trends. The uh, epidemiological curve of the so-called virus is definitely, it takes more than two months. Lah. So uh, having said that, I think the best time is uh, now. So for whatever reason that anyone is looking to do business or in terms of, let's say, for example, you're a landlord, you have to have some plans right up your sleeves right now already to handle the uh, upcoming credit crunch, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, even auction, even if there is, I'm not sure whether... Uh, in the court, uh, high court uh, auction, it is allowed or not? Because looking at 
the director general's uh, advice to say you know social distance no mass gathering perhaps yeah. everybody have to be staying one meter apart before you raise up your hand and stuff like that <laughs> maximum again, 10 no, person is allowed in the room yeah. you know? yeah. so looking at it it could be an advantage because this is the time where people don't want to go out of the house so perhaps look always think contrarian like what i always uh, do you know if it's a kind of auction where you have to attend and you have to you know look for some property or viewing i think this is also a good time provided uh, both parties are uh, willing to take the risk to go out like you know uh, and overall, I think uh, the market is still, we still have to run, you know, uh, uh, certain properties, example, which are uh, already unoccupied, you know, example, co-working spaces. Uh, perhaps that is also uh, something that people should look at right now in the next two months uh, with this MCO lifted, perhaps they could remodel or re-strategize their business, uh, knowing that, you know, if uh, they are going to have this uh, rental uh, expenses perhaps they want to reduce the rental expenses so go into some co-working spaces or even share some of these expenses with their uh, similar uh, competitors you know in, in that context uh. so but I think mm -hmm. now is we will see a, a convergence of business and real estate together uh, coupled with the digital transformation that is happening with all the online things needed in fact I've seen in the last two weeks there are so many real estate stakeholders are using online to perform businesses nowadays uh, surpri really surprising because you know a lot of people thought brick and mortar you need to go out there feel it touch it but uh, everybody beside education they are doing online uh, meetings to get things done la. i, I think this is a new norm la. this is a new norm yeah talking about e-bidding uh, uh for right now e-bidding is only meant for non laka case is it which means strata strata title case uh cases how uh, without issue title with, without issue title how about those that have uh, issued title? Can can they still like from the you know court cases? Can we still do e bidding? Are, are we are we enabled already for this digital transformation? At this moment, no, because it is under the uh, regulations that all this uh, laka property uh -huh. can be on uh, land office or any other places, but no laka has to be in the uh, high court still. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, so we still need to have that fear la, of uh, it might be a mass gathering, you know, for what you know, for, for, for some hot properties, there could be hundreds of people bidding. Uh, yeah. So that's the risk. That's the risk. But Laka, but Laka property does not mean that they are old and uh, low cost properties. Some of the Laka property could mm -hmm. be uh, newly built, but they yep. haven't had issues strata either yet. Understand. So those are also under Laka property. So yeah. in other words, if there are new projects that completed, but this uh, no title, no title. Mm -hmm. Within three or four years, they cannot issue the title yet. So these are still under group under Laka property. Yeah, yeah I do look forward to the adoption of e bidding actually uh, Despite we have some glitches and some delays, you know, because I think when you have some challenge of crisis like this, is the best way to push forward some of this transformation. Imagine if we are doing all this online e bidding. It saves a lot of time and uh, at least we know that it's even safer, if we lose the bid, yeah, we don't have to go out safer and there's so much of time wasted just to attend, you know, sometimes uh, when we go for auction, even not personally, we get our representative to go. So I think mm -hmm. these are some of the things that it, we look forward to the positive change like, in the landscape of uh, auction property. Yeah. And well, auction, that yeah. Way, like, I like the physical auction. I mean, uh, it's, it's fun to, you know, put up the hand. That, that is the urge to win the property. But mm -hmm. for online e bidding wise, I feel that the thing is like that. The emotion is not there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. maybe just okay. Agree, agree. Unless they do something like a Zoom kind of bidding like, where you can <laughs> yes, see each other yes. putting up their oh. hand. Everybody must put yes. on a video. La. Yes, yes. Yeah. And the, the other thing is uh, when we talk about auction property, we have this perception. Okay. First thing, too many syndicates syndication is running the show second of course what if i i won the bid and uh, i think i will i will only be given 90 days is it for the fulfillment uh to to, to get my loan approved and to disperse out the loan is that right is it 90 days 90 to 120 days 90 to 120 days so mm -hmm. uh and the, the third thing is uh 
some banks, because this one I'm not too sure, some banks, they might not be as receptive to give out loans or to a certain margin for auction property. I don't know whether that is true or not. Maybe you guys can share some insights on these uh, this, this scenarios. Uh, so in terms of auction property, most of the auction property are just like sub It mm-hmm. is the same case. But only certain cases, like for example, they are LACA cases, but they already exceeded more than 10 years without uh, individual title or strata title. That are the cases whereby bank will refuse to issue you loan. So mm-hmm. most of the time, this kind of cases, they will not be very high uh, price. Maybe 30, 40,000 kind of low cost property, uh, mm-hmm. usually. Yeah. You know, this kind of property, uh, the property that you have to prepare cash to buy. Mm. And, and some of the auction property also, they might fall under caveat. So uh, what, uh, what, what should be the best way for us to buy auction property? Mm. Does it mean that we have to, let's say this is a 100,000 worth for auction property, we have to at least send by 100,000 cash in case, you know, these things were to happen and things like that. What, 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 what is your advice on that? So usually before I go for auction, I will run a title search first depending mm-hmm. on whether there's a caveat or not. If there's a caveat, I will see who put on the caveat. If this person is not related with uh, the other party, okay, that party, uh, if let's say this person have not owned any money for the person who put the caveat on this title, so there is a chances that we can has a new owner, we can sue them. But this will take about a year to complete. So, and the amount of money to throw in to do this matter is not cheap. So rather than that, we will try to avoid this kind of cases, try to avoid all this kind of caveat, private caveat, beside bank caveat. So I will try to avoid all this. Um, so if I have avoid all these kind of cases so my risks have lowered down already. Mm-hmm. Now then after that I will actually go to the bank first to get a pre-approved loan first. So see the bank will, how much the bank will able to loan me mm-hmm. before I go to the uh, auction. So after upon getting the auction, you know, if I win the auction already, I will straight away run to the bank and get the uh, approval, uh, approval letter. Yeah. Agree. Yeah, to add on, I yes. perhaps uh, I always believe is property is a team sport, lah. You know, as much as sometimes we are very discreet with our personal wealth and we want to do things on our own. That's why, uh, but we cannot run away from the fact that some people want to buy auction property alone, which is quite dangerous. That's why there are so many buyers beware out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, aside from getting pre-approved loan, I think one person, uh, the person who wants to buy auction needs to actually get a proper lawyer, a lawyer who knows and have done uh, have track record in actually handling. Uh, the auction cases because uh, paperwork for auction cases are different and uh, they need to be having good relationship also with the banks. Mm-hmm. Uh, I experienced uh, in the early days uh, auction where some lawyers they say they can do because they need businesses but then again when they cannot do this is where the trouble begins. So then everybody trying to push each other. So perhaps uh, before we start there's this document called proclamation of sale whether non laka or laka where it's good to run through that uh, together. Example, if you are with your relationship banker, uh, to get some pre-approved loan as well as also the lawyer. So at least you know what to do next because uh, as mentioned earlier, it's not KK, the time is very crucial. 90 to 120 days is not a lot if you minus all the weekends and if, especially if there's public holidays and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So uh, that is something crucial that people should look at. Otherwise, uh, you know, you may win the bid, but you may have to prepare extra Lose the video. Cash. Yeah, 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 you lose it. <laughs> Otherwise, hmm. so okay. Uh, what will be your property investment strategy right now? Strategy right now, yeah, is to shop for property. <laughs> okay. what, what, what kind okay, of checklist right now, would you put yourself on? There are much more other uh, ways to buy property besides buying option property. Uh, of course, option is the fundamental uh, place whereby you can actually find a lot of good deals. But before auction, we have to find all these deals and filter it and then we can actually do some creative ways to buy property with them. So for example, I have a few ways uh, which I actually teach all this uh, method in my classes. So one of it is like lease option. We can use them as lease option because at the end of the day, how much loan can you take? You can't yeah, get a lot sure. of loan. Uh, sure. At the end of the day, even you do compression loan, what pressure loan, mm-hmm. 
there is a limit of number of property you can buy. So at the end of the day, you have to use some creative method to buy your property. So I intend to look into this kind of option. There will be more in the market in uh, the next few weeks. So I need to start filtering out all this uh, owners and start talking to them. For me, I think the uh, so-called general advice uh, we have to put aside right now for myself even mm -hmm. uh, because I'm uh, looking at the situation right now. Yes, it's a bias market. Uh, the next short, medium to short, short to medium term, there will be a lot of good deals. Uh, so for people who are ready with buy, uh, cash, yes, they can buy. However, buying is only fifty percent of the question, and I always put it in my book that to say that rental is the real. Uh, thing that sustain your property. You can buy many now, but if you cannot get a tenant who can pay you, they lost their job. So uh, why bother to accumulate a mass of uh, properties uh, that will only actually, uh, uh, you know, uh, make you make, make your financials go down. So there's a lot. There's a lot of headache right now. Uh, even landlords are giving discount. So as much as there's a good deals, I would say that uh, the bear is arrived. The long haul is that uh, the duration for the bull market is still on the up in the short term. I would basically look at the next three months just to uh, do a lot of research and work. Uh, perhaps buying would may start uh, after three months to six months time mm -hmm. just to lock in certain properties. Example for own usage, if I were to expand on my office, then I would want to get into a bigger space mm -hmm. because now I can get it and use it. I don't have to worry that I have to cannot find any landlord or tenant. Uh, if I were to use it as investment purposes, then I would need to know what is the market uh, in terms of the industry or sector where business may try, where uh, uh, perhaps uh, uh, they could fulfill certain cash flow. Uh, yeah. As I earlier mentioned, some cash flow business like groceries, uh, uh, malls, uh, uh, retail basis where there are people need essentials, you know. So perhaps these are some of the subsectors that we could invest in, and I'm definitely looking at it, uh, or even uh, perhaps some commercial building where we can turn it into some uh, wellness, uh, wellness centers uh, yeah. where, where you know, people nowadays after COVID-19, everybody is very well aware of being healthy rather than having a million dollars in the bank account. So yeah. I think you have to go back to a need-based society to understand the supply and demand of uh, the market before we decide where to put our money uh, to, to, to reap from the profits of real estate. Yeah. Lastly, uh, for, uh, sorry, for... Just to yes. get on to whatever... Oh, sorry, just sure, to sure, add sure. On go ahead, Vicky. Uh, Alan Poon yeah. has just mentioned. Yeah. Now, uh, Alan actually mentioned something very important, which is uh, if you buy a lot of property, then at the end of the day, there's nobody is going to rent it. Uh, that will be an issue, which yes. I agree. A lot of uh, problem like this happens. But uh, I foresee that right now, the market, if there will be a lot of auction coming up, there will be a lot of tenants out in the market as well. If they lose their home, they're gonna be they won't be a homeowner and they will become a tenant. So in this situation, where you buy is very important as well. If you buy in an old saturated area, like for example, Medini kind of places, you won't be able to rent it out at all. But mm -hmm. other than that, you actually can able to rent it out you you are one of the rare species ready become a landowner or homeowner you are the rare species ready because there will be more people losing their home and they need to rent so it works both way like in a way yes uh, it's a yeah. Win -win situation. yeah lastly uh of course uh, to all our audience tonight uh, most of them staying tuned because they want to get some strategy though i mean for those that have extra cash of course uh what should be their strategy like if they want to invest in properties? I've actually indicated some of the subsectors that uh, people with some extra cash flow can go in because uh, uh, again, property serves two purposes. Uh, it also helps for those who, as Wiki mentioned, uh, doesn't have a roof above their head. So it's something noble that if we can buy and then you can rent it out. But uh, ultimately, I think it's to always safeguard uh, our our own turf first. As mm -hmm. we said, charity begins at home. So if you are having some extra money and you want to expand your business, you want to relocate, now is the best time to go into. Mm -hmm. uh, again, uh, look into some uh, uh, places where economic activities are always there. So uh, depending on the industry type, as I mentioned just now, if it's example going to be some uh, uh, essential uh, businesses, then perhaps you can buy some shop lots nearby uh, housing area estates mm -hmm. and whatnot. 
So these are some of the things. And uh, if you were looking into some e-commerce businesses, of course, uh, warehouse is also a, a, a good place to invest in because uh, warehouse doesn't have to be just putting stuff. There are many businesses now that, example, F&B, uh, the last few years has been changing from uh, farm to the restaurant, directly fresh produce. So these are some of the areas. I guess it's all about uh, understanding the business and economic landscape to really know where to put the money because uh, we may think on our side as a landlord that the yield could be good, but eventually who are the users of the property type that we are looking into. Sure. So I believe there's always, uh, there's always uh, a sector that, you know, that we can perform. But if you ask me stand alone, grade eight officers, I think uh, that's a no-no for now. Mm-hmm. So uh, perhaps can, uh, you can invest into maybe even a startup or co-working space uh, communal living. These are some of the areas that people can look into to invest. At least you can even uh, make some business out of it besides collecting some rental. You know? Tied up with some operators who can actually do that. That's what I look at in the last few years when it comes to uh, hospital, uh, uh, sorry, hotel, hotel business. But of course now hotel is definitely affected. Lah. Right now, I think whatever cash that you have, you have to separate into two. One is for your own living reserve. The other one is for your investment. Uh, I, I know that there are a lot of people who do not separate these two matters because they think that I have 200,000, I should invest entire 200,000. That is very wrong. Because during this period of time, you don't know how uh, this COVID thing will last. Even if it lasts uh, for another two to three months, uh, we have another after effect for three to six months. So we need to have some substantial amount of reserve in hand. And after that, this amount of cash that you want to invest, you need to know a strategy whereby how it will multiply by itself rather than you know if you have two hundred thousand or invest all this two hundred thousand put into one property so you need to know how you can actually use the least possible capital to buy one property and so that any additional amount of money is for the reserve for that property as well besides buying that property you also have to think of the reserve for the property. For example, you have management to take care of. Yes. You have the pin, Chukai Pintu assessment. Pit all this. Assessment, yeah. So you need to focus on uh, not just throw the money thinking that buying the property, that's all. This is a buyer's market. Everywhere you can get a deal. But then, of course, you have to craft up a structure whereby how you're going to spend this money. Um, and on top of that, I actually think that now buying properties, uh, don't buy too many at the same time as well because you don't know what's going to happen as well. Uh, you buy two or three properties, it's fine, but don't buy like five, six, seven, eight, nine. I've seen before people buy a lot of property at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and on top of that, if possible, buy places uh, that is not too hot spot because mm-hmm. there are other places like, you know, Port Clang is coming up. Mm-hmm. Uh, government has invested a lot of money in Port Clang. If you are looking at warehouses, that could be a very good place. Now, traditional method of investing into property could be one of the best methods. Mm-hmm. Although it will take a long time, but it will be actually much more uh, sustainable. Yeah, understand. Thanks for your insightful sharing today. And uh, I think for all our viewers out there for tonight, I'm sure you all have benefited a lot. And uh, like, like what both of our panelists is sharing, uh, don't rush into making decisions and always have uh, always set out two funds. One is for investment fund, the other one is for living fund. Uh, do not get over excited uh, in, uh, with, with what will unveil uh, in months to come. Uh, stay grounded, really analyze your deal, do the enough due diligence before you embark on any uh, of the investment decision making. With that, uh, again, thank you, Alan, and thank you, Vicky, for your thank time you. and your sharing. Thank you for your and uh, wish you all all the best. Stay safe and stay at home. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.